super excited for this episode because I absolutely love learning about marketing and I really see it as a creative outlet. So I am thrilled to have a very special guest with me today and uh, and she's going to be sharing how to position yourself as the go-to in your industry. And Hayley Osborne started her first business when she was just 25 and has built multiple six-figure businesses and marketed some of the world's biggest brands. And she's built international uh, business networks, helped hundreds of small business owners grow their business. And she's a mom with two young boys. So welcome to the coaching circle, Hayley Osborne. Hi, Tony. That was a lovely introduction. I'm a bit like, oh, you know, when, you know, when you hear like things about yourself, you're like, oh yeah, I did that. <laughs> okay, that was me. Yeah, that's that was me. me. <laughs> I'm so glad to be here. Thanks for having me. <laughs> yes. Oh, it, you're so welcome. And look, to get started, because I know that there's so much that you have to share with, uh, with us today, but what I really love to start with is just, I, I'm fascinated with people's business journey. So Tell us a bit about what led you, because like going into business is no, you know, many feet, right? It takes a lot of uh, grit. It takes a different kind of thinking. So what led you to start your business and why is it important to you? Yeah. So I'll start. I'm Hayley Osborne and my business is called Hayley Osborne. And uh, what I do now is help people get really clear on what activities and strategies they need to do to have really big growth with the least amount of time and effort in their business. And I started off, I've had three businesses. I started at my very first business, which was a fashion label um, when I was I think I was even younger than 25. I didn't know what I was doing. I was just really creative and really good at what I did. And, you know, I would make things for myself, wear it out. Then I sold at a local market. And then next thing was I was having national stockers. I was manufacturing in China and I was nominated for Emerging Designer of the Year. And wow. I was like, didn't know what I was doing. I was so young. And if you try and look it up, it, guys, it was before social media. <laughs> so... Oh. Instagram started in 2009 and this was 2007, eight, I think. So right. uh, that, yeah. that could be like a whole era, like BSM. That doesn't sound right, but before no. social media. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so that was that. And I kind of got my love for business, but I definitely didn't love that fashion industry. It wasn't mm. really for me because I kind of got the creative life sucked out of me and the way it works is you have to release a collection six months prior to the season. And it kind of, you know, didn't, didn't work. So then mm. I, um, I, I have a marketing background, I have a marketing degree and I moved to Sydney and I was there for five years marketing and working with the brand team of some of the biggest alcohol brands in the world. And I loved it. And I, that catapulted my career and it didn't really tickle that business edge. So I started a candle business and <laughs> then I would go to trade fairs and things in my free time. And I would talk to different business owners and, you know, what do you do? La la la. What do you do during the day? If this isn't your full-time gig and the candle business did really well, mm. but it's still, I still had a really demanding, um, successful corporate job. And so after going to a few trade fairs, I'd picked up clients without actually having a business. Cause they're like, we love your energy. We know that, you know, your stuff. And they were international clients as well. So I was no, nothing like going straight in the deep end, sink or swim. And yeah. it kind of grew from there. And I kind of got like, not pushed for my family, but my family are in business. And they were like, you're not married. You don't have kids go out on your own. And I was really scared, but I'm really glad that I did it. Um, and that I never looked back. So mm. I just sort of grew very fast, very organically. Um, and I learned along the way as I sort of went in terms of automating and systemizing and getting really clear about what it was that I actually love to do. Um, and, you know, now I get to help as many people in business as I possibly can. And I do know that small business owners in our economy are the backbone of it. And I'm sure that is the same for other economies around the world, but obviously we're in Australia. And so if I can help as many small business owners as I possibly can with their marketing foundations and getting, you know, them properly set up and understanding how this works to 
amplify their businesses than I've done my job. And from a really deep perspective, I'm setting up the world so that my kids can live in a beautiful place. So Mm. that's really like my entrance and where I'm at now. And I just love what I do. I love helping people. I love those aha moments. I love, you know, that small businesses can take what I've taught them and run with it and, you know, not reinvent the wheel on things because that's where that messy like middle is. And it takes a lot of time. If you don't have to do that, if you can just fly with it, then I'm so proud to say my job is, is done. Amazing. You know, there was, there was so many things in there that I loved (laughs) Hayley. And you know what, one of the thing, one of the first things that popped into my awareness that you said about having a a, um, candle business. And I swear I've met many successful women in business who have like one of their first businesses has been like candles or jewelry making or something like that. And and they've been successful, right? I think it's really cool because I think, you know, it's, it's a bit like, and it ties into what you just said then about wanting to make the world a better place, right? Because I, I resonate with that hugely. The work that mm. I do, I really believe is around helping raise consciousness of the planet, right? But it, you can find this purpose in any type of business. So like, when you were selling candles, you know, even when you were selling candles, and you had this candle business, there would have been a higher purpose in there, no doubt around, you know, making people's lives better and and, and the, those kinds of things. But I think regardless of what it is, I think you're right. When people are in small businesses, they have this kind of drive to want to make the world a better place for them, for others, for their children in, in whatever whatever aspect that is that's more commonly the drivers like yes if you have a business the the purpose of that is making a profit and making money but it's also very heavily backed by I want to make a difference in the world is is that what you find a lot with your clients yeah I think when you lead with that I think the byproduct of that which is revenue and profit is inevitable Mm. but when you're leading with that and it's from the heart and you have a really clear like vision, mission, and your purpose is to do better, to do mm. good in the world, that that just comes. Yeah. And, and I think it's a really important thing, especially because, you know, like a lot of the people who listen to this podcast and, and are clients of mine are coaches and wellbeing practitioners and, and those kinds of, um, you know, uh, people who, who work in business. And, and money can be a bit of a blocker right? Like a bit, mm. a bit of a, or asking for money and those kinds of things, or even marketing and sales can be a little bit kind of icky. But, you know, I think one of the the biggest things, and I think you, you've you just kind of said this, is that you have to put your focus on who you're serving, not what you're getting. Yeah, that's right. And another thing too, I find that a lot of my clients, they, you know, are quite scared to market themselves. They lack confidence. They lack, um, I guess, a little bit of the, like, just push it live. Like done Mm. is better than perfect is my motto. Oh yeah, me too. Yeah. (laughs) And I think too, like, oh, I've lost my, I've lost the thing that I was going to say is not in my head anymore. It's coming back. I know it's coming back. I think So what was I saying? I think, yeah, a lot of business owners, what were you saying before about- So like people, you know, shifting that focus from yourself to others, right? When you're feeling a bit icky about sales oh, or marketing. Yeah, that's what I was yeah. going to say. Like you need to think of it as a mentality of like, by you not sharing what it is that you have to offer, you are doing a disservice to everybody that actually will benefit from what you have to give. Yeah. And that that's so true. So when you reframe it, in that way, I feel like it's like, oh yeah, if I'm not sending a weekly email to my email list of people who have handed over their name and email because they actually want to hear from me and trust me, like we don't give away our emails for free these days, right? If people are handing you that and you're not communicating with them, you're spamming in reverse as far as I'm concerned, because they want to hear from you. They want what you have to offer. So Mm. always keep that in mind when you're feeling a little bit like, oh, it's not perfect or, oh, I'm not sure if I'm confident enough to do it, like do it. And then that will be the fuel that will help you to feel confident. Yeah. I look just on that, Hayley, I would love to hear your explanation of what marketing is, because I think like when sometimes people feel a bit icky about marketing, it's because they're like, they feel like they're going buy my stuff, buy my stuff, buy my stuff. Yeah. Right. No. Whereas it's, it's like, when I talk to people, I'm like, it's 
like this is just my perspective I, I want to hear yours but I would just say it's more about having people understand that you you understand their problem and you um and that they can build a relationship with you to get to know like and trust you and they you, they know that you understand their problem and that you have a solution for them and you you make it really easy for them to understand how they get that solution that's yeah. kind of in a nutshell of how I think about it but how would you describe it well the word marketing, the word strategy, the word sales, as far as I'm concerned, is they're all quite icky, confusing words that kind of are a bit like an acronym because, you know, sales can be perceived as sleazy and all the things, but it's really more around storytelling. Mm. That is like as plain as I can possibly explain it in how good you are at telling your brand story and what that looks like. So you have to do the work. And when you can get clear on what those foundations are for you, then I think the rest comes quite easily. Yeah. But storytelling would be the best way because people don't buy from being sold to, they buy through being um, told stories. Yes. And so through your marketing, that word, it's your storytelling that will convert your audience into paying customers because people relate to people. Mm. So yeah if that explains it in a kind of yeah I I love nice that way I love that Haley yeah it does I think you know storytelling I think is is such an uh and even in NLP you know there's a whole section I teach around uh, telling metaphors right because of the connections you can make the unconscious connections with people to mapping out where they where they're at now what their problems are you know the journey and then you know where they can find a solution and make those connections in their own mind um and and that's where you can bring emotion in right because people are driven emotionally and it's very mm. hard to get emotion across if you're not telling a story I think yeah and oh, don't forget everyone in this day and age of where you know social media is we've got a captive audience on Instagram of something like 2.35 these figures might be wrong billion people wow. monthly active users so mm. if you can like tell your story to 1% of that, that's like 230,000 people. Mm. And so imagine the, like, if you got rid of that, um, I'm not confident, the, like, it needs to be perfect before it's done. Like you've got the ability to reach a lot of people and make a huge impact. Mm. Yeah. And I think that's the, the, this is the key thing that, like you were saying about not, you know, done's better than perfect, right? Because if you do watch any of these sort of influencers or anything else, they're not being perfect. No, Nobody wants to see perfect anymore. People want no. real, right? And we're nosy as consumers, very yes. nosy. So we want to know what's going on and we can relate more to the every man than we can to the, you know, pedestal person whatever that looks like to yeah people. yeah yeah oh this is really interesting thing so um so Haley, you know what would you say if someone was just starting out in their business right so if they're just starting out in their business and they've like they've learned some kind of skill it might be coaching health modality whatever that might be and they're like okay I'm gonna start a business what what do you think are the things that you need to know or the best tips to yeah, really so get the start first from First and foremost, I think getting your marketing foundations in order are really important and understanding what they are for you. So I use a framework inside my business. Um, the acronym is MAPS, but basically what that means is market, audience, problem, and solution. So if you can articulate what that looks like for you in mm. a beautiful sentence, that will help to form what your marketing foundations are to help you get started. And I don't think you should be everything to everyone. I think that you should do one thing well and then move on to the next thing. And I know in business, it's also a little bit of, and I'm, I'm you know, happy to call a spade a spade. It's like I start a business, I need to put food on the table. So mm. I need to make money. But it, in saying that, it's it's okay to take a few steps back to then take 10 steps forward. So to really articulate, like to be able to articulate what that is. And it, it's not easy. That's why a lot of people do get help with that 
and getting their marketing foundation set up because when you're so close to your business, you can't see it anymore and you tend to overcomplicate the most simple, most beautiful way to say things. And so, you know, it is important that getting help is okay too and putting your hand up to get help. So I think establishing your marketing foundations is a really important way to start and then making sure your digital assets assets positioning and footprint is all in complete alignment to one another. So that way, you know, no matter where anyone looks, you are appearing the same and you're, you know, following them around, whether it be the internet or a bus um, shelter or a billboard, mm. you are the same person. And that, that like. Kind oh, of in real life, right? Yeah. In real life, that completes your brand story. And mm. then, you know, followed on by like planning and organizing as well as optimizing your content to increase sales. So that's a lot to take in <laughs> for someone, mm. but just think of it, getting your marketing foundations in order are kind of the the number one thing. And I will say too, if you're sitting there and you're thinking, yeah, but Hayley, I don't know what mine are and I don't know how to do that. I do have a free guide on my website. Um, There's a couple of things there that will help you with that. It's HayleyOsborne.com. It's easy to find. So oh, fabulous. And we'll put that link there. in the, in the yeah. show notes as well to make it really easy for people to yeah. find. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's, but, that's awesome. You know, I've been doing this for a really long time, like over 15 years and in my own business over six years. And I've put together, you know, over the years, a finite process in order to like map this out and get it right. Just from working with a lot of business owners and yeah, it's, it's Mm. tested, measured and it works. Yeah. uh, That is really good. So definitely check that out in the show notes and and Hayley, I know, you know, just talking about that, right, when you were talking about your market and the audience and the problems and the solution, I hope I got that right, mm. um, is that, and and not being a, a generalist, because that's the thing that I often see with people, you know, with my clients and um, being in the coaching space is that, oh, well, I don't want to cut anyone out. But I think, you know, from my pers- perspective, I always say, but the thing is, if you're saying you do everything, nobody can really hear clearly enough what you do, let alone, well, like in my experience, although I'm really clear about working with coaches and wellbeing practitioners, I do have other people that I work with that's not in that space. But even when they're watching, like they still consume all my content and can see that I'm an expert in the space that I'm talking about. and But they still think I'm an expert to help them, even though I'm not talking about yep. that. Can you? Yep. Yeah, this happens a lot. And I I come across this a lot with business owners is like, I don't want to niche niche too much because then I'm going to be excluding people. But what you are doing is, yes, you are niching, you are targeting this person who is this age that does this thing and da, da, da. And you become really good at your tone of voice Mm. and you become really like laser focused on what your energy is and what you're putting out there and who it's to that doesn't matter who's watching, they're going to be attracted to your energy and your messaging without you even knowing it. Mm. And, and they can the see you're an expert, right? That's the thing. They can see you're an expert. And so they yep. assume that you're good at other things. Yeah. Oh, and, yeah. you know, people come to me, like I predominantly work with service-based businesses, but I work with every type of business and it's, it's your energy as well. And they can mm. see that, you know, you either vibe with someone or you don't. And Mm. I think that that's something to really look out for as well. When, if you do need help with some things, it's like, it's a two-way street. You find your person that you most resonate with that has walked in your shoes, that's done what you've done, that can, you can get to where you want to go at a faster pace. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the thing, isn't it? That's the basis of coaching or getting some kind of help is that could you do it by yourself? Well, possibly, but how long will it take you and what will that cost you? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Whereas I've, if you work with someone who can go, this is exactly what you need to do. This is do this, 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 this It's going to make it shorter, better results, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Your trajectory yeah. is a lot steeper in mm. a really good way. Cause you don't mm. know what you don't know at the end of the day. Yeah. 
Mm. Yeah, that is so true, isn't it? You don't know what you do. <laughs> I say that all the time. And I, you know, I think there is always, education is one of my highest values. And yeah. even for me, like there's always something to learn. Like I know that's one of yours as well. Yeah. Um, and it's just a beautiful thing. The more educated that, that you are, the more, I guess, choices that you have, and you know choice creates like freedom and freedom can create big change so yes yeah absolutely and you know one of the things that I remember hearing from one of my mentors was um don't think that all knowledge comes from your school so it's like there's always more to learn like don't get a closed mind and going oh well I've learned this one thing that's just how it is mm. you know it's always being mm. open to things change and I think especially in marketing things change what you learned five years ago or like three years ago, probably 12 months ago <laughs> might be different than what it is today. Yeah. 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 A hundred percent. And like, look at AI. I mean, I know we're talking about this offline, but mm. I never would have thought that would be a thing. N never did it come into my mind. And now, you know, it's a, it's a beautiful tool when used responsibly. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Responsibly. And I, I think that's, that's the thing, isn't it? It's like it's using it as a tool to assist you, not as a delegating it, <laughs> delegating all these oh, tasks. To... Look, and like from a uh, a brand and marketing perspective, if you're going to be using AI as your EA, yes, your VA or your EA, yeah. uh, you will soon become very generic in the market. Yeah. 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 And then it's like, oh my God, that person's got the same post that I had. It's like, yeah, they've yeah. put in the same prompt into chat yeah. GPT. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's yeah. right. But yeah. yeah, use it for good, not for evil. <laughs> yes. So Hayley, I just want to ask you as well, you, you know, we were kind of touching on this before, but if we if you think about how do you position yourself as the go-to in your industry, what would you like to add to that to give people a thought about how how do you do that? Because you know, because this is why, right? I, I often when I work with people and at the moment I'm running a challenge about imposter syndrome and people have resistance to saying that they're an expert or that that they're, you know, whatever, high up in whatever. And and I always talk about like, well, you've got to look at it in the context of what you're dealing with, right? But when you think about, because if I, like, I don't say that I'm like the most knowledgeable person in the world in NLP, right? I don't know more than Richard Bandler or, you know, Todd James or anything like that, but I'm an expert in the field where I work with the people that I work. So how, how would you explain that to people about, you know, how do you position yourself as the go-to in your industry? Look, I think the first and foremost thing that you have to do as a business, as a business owner is crown yourself right? And I mean, literally own it and put the crown on. Okay. Because you didn't get where you are by accident. All right. Are we, I'm, I'm and if you're going to put this on YouTube or whatever it is, put the crown on, crown yourself. Hey, yeah, well, there you go. Where'd you get that I've got from? my crown. <laughs> you recognize this one, <laughs> but it sits there. I've got my crown yeah, and sits right? there. Yes. So, yes. So you have to crown yourself. You have to believe what you do. And I think like to your point exactly is coming back to my maps framework, mm. right? When you get that like that hammer on the nail, write it on a post-it note and stick it on your mirror and repeat in the, in the mirror to yourself over and over out loud again until you actually believe it. Okay, mm. because nobody is going to come and knock on your door and graduate you to the next level in your business. You have to do that yourself. Now, it did take me a couple of years to realize that, but yeah. as soon as I did, I was like, uh, you know, like a bull out of the gates, really, because yeah. I was like, hang on a minute, like, hello, wake up call. And I wish that I'd kind of done that a little bit sooner, but you do have to crown yourself. So then yeah. play it over and over and then try and like incorporate that, not when you're at a networking event, when you are at a party with your friends and somebody that you don't know asks you what you do, that is the, your moment to step into the limelight, right? Ah. And don't just say, oh, I'm in sales. Oh, I'm a masseuse. Oh, I'm this or oh, I'm that. No, like think about what it was that you wrote down on your piece of paper and how you help people and the transformation that you provide and then answer that. Yeah. So, um. Just pause. 
Can we just pause? So when you're out and about, try and incorporate that into your conversation with people. And the more that you do that, the more that you step into who you're really meant to be or who you want to be and who you show up as in your business is who you show up as yourself and your day to day. So really like take that on board and own it as quick as you can, because no one is going to graduate you to that next level. Yes. I I love that you said that Hayley, because I I was talking about this recently. It's like, no one's got a stamp, an authority stamp that is going to come around and stamp you and say, congratulations, you're now officially, you know, at the next level. it's, It's something that you just have to decide, isn't it? And I think because people go, oh, what is everyone, you know, going to think I who I think I am and all that kind of stuff. And it's like, they might question that for a very short t- period of time, but your certainty needs to trump their doubt. A hundred percent. Oh my God. I love that. And also from a, a brand voice and marketing perspective, what you can do, a big go-to strategy of mine that I teach my clients is try and do some really top funnel activities, right? Where you can hit as a business starting out, or if you're wanting to build your audience and you're wanting to scale your business and grow, those top of funnel activities are going to be imperative to you being able to reach your goals quicker. What that mm. is, is getting more eyeballs as quick as possible. So pitch yourself to media outlets, pitch yourself to appear on podcasts that other Mm. people are running, just pitch yourself so that you can get the most eyeballs with the least amount of time and effort in your business. So Mm. I've got some templates that and swipe copy that I use inside my membership, superhero marketing that helps you to be able to reach out to media without doing the work, right? Get on the editor's good, good behavior list. And then follow up because, you know, they're busy. They don't always reply. Mm -hmm. There's follow-up scripts and everything to be able to get you as seen in because Mm. they are the top of funnel things that you need to do to reach more people to grow your business quickly. And then, yeah, podcasts are are another thing too. So, you know, there's a way to do things in 2023 and it is not like a robotic way. There's a beautiful way to talk to people. And I know communication is all about what you do, but you know, when you are a nice, lovely person and you show that you genuinely care about someone and that you are interested in supporting them through their, you know, you being a guest on their podcast or, you know, pitching a really quality media article, chances are, if you're nice, they're probably going to say yes. So I've appeared in different media and it wasn't hard at all because Mm -hmm. I had the right strategy. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's the key though, isn't it? It's like, these people are looking for stories. They're looking for guests. Um, and so it is like you're doing them a favor, but you have to, I think you need to go like really look at what are they about and how can I help them, right? Mm. Isn't it? Yep. It's like you want to be yep. providing that value. It's not just like, I'll just put me on your show. Yeah. It's Don't get lost in way. the crowd Yeah, is what I would advise. Mm. Don't get lost in the crowd in those top of funnel activities that then feed lots of people in through your business. But what you have to be ready with is a really good back of house in terms of systems and processes to be able to support a potential viral message, yes. <laughs> which is also where I've seen like businesses kind of downfall. So they've got so many people interested to work with them, but they don't have the infrastructure to support it, which is a yes. shame too. Oh, Hayley, do you know what? That just really hits on one of the big fears that people have because people, everyone thinks, oh, it's fear of failure. Fear of success is the other one. Mm. How am I going to deal with all, all of this? And and more often than not, it's like, you know, that's like a quality problem that you wish you had, that you've mm. got more people coming to you. But but I think, you know, I think what you're saying there is really important about getting more eyeballs because I know I see people that they're like busy going, oh, you know, getting out the, the, the social media posts and getting on to do live videos and all that stuff, which is great. But if you've only got 300 people watching you, that's it's not enough. Yeah. Yeah. But don't discount that either because I like to use the analogies of, okay, so if you have 50 people and you've just started an Instagram, you're a slow like getting on, but you know, don't worry because there's room to coexist for everyone. If you've got 50 people, you could fill a theater with those people as long as they are quality 
followers yeah. and, and people that are coming in, right? If you've got 150 people, you could feel like the big cinema. If you've got 300 people, you could feel like a little SANFL oval. Yeah. Well, Realistically, I mean, like. Yeah. But the key thing that you're saying there is the quality of those quality. people. Because I, I know yes. I've seen people do things where they're like, they pay to get all these emails on their email list or they, they um, do all these ace Facebook ads that's just bringing in emails, but it's like, what is that even converting to? Like, are these people even interested? Yeah. And be yeah. careful like with that as well. Like if people are listening and thinking, oh, I just need to grow my audience because then I'll look better and more whatever as a brand. Like if you are contacting people that haven't actually subscribed to hear from you and given you their okay, as in yes, and you have a certain percentage of people that actually unsubscribe from your email or whatever that looks like at one time, you will get shut down by the um, provider. Yeah. So don't do that. That's don't like a that. very big no-no and I've seen it mm. happen. Mm. So it's providing. So what would you say then? It's like providing quality content to like yeah. a, you know, particular market audience uh, Understanding Absolutely. that problem solution, like you were saying in your model. Yeah. Yeah. And hone in on your thought leadership and what that looks like for you specifically. Mm. Because if you're not true to yourself and you're looking at what everybody else is doing, then eventually it's going to come unstuck. So you really have to sit down. I'm sorry, but you have to do the work. There's mm. no easy way to become successful and, you know, grow your business. For anyone that tells you that they're sitting on a beach and they're only working 10 hours a week and they're running a multiple seven figure business, it's BS. Yeah. It's total that's, BS. That's how I got into affiliate <laughs> marketing before I started my coaching business. I got into affiliate marketing and I paid all these thousands of dollars because I thought I was going to be like just running this little business off a laptop, traveling the world, like being all fit and toned, you know, like just raking it in. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I didn't make any money affiliate marketing, by the way, not that I have a problem with affiliate marketing. I have affiliates now in my own business, but at that time, yeah, I, I got drawn into the whole get rich quick scheme. It's, yeah, uh... <laughs> I think too, I think there's a lot of um, misunderstood or, you know, just wrong messaging that um, powerful people have in the social media space. And mm. I just think if you're, just careful when you're investing in things to, yeah. Yeah. Well. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Hayley, you know, I, you've shared so much value today. I really appreciate that. And and I would just like, one of the questions, other questions I like to just ask people when they come on, because I know, like I said earlier, that being in business is a real journey, right? There can be a lot of challenges that can be really rewarding as well. But, you know, Often when we're in those challenges, we feel like oh, it's only me. I'm the only person having mm. this challenge and everyone else seems to be super successful. So what do you think for you has been some of your or your biggest challenge in business? Mm. I always like to flip. I'm a glass half full kind of gal and I always like to flip this to be a positive. But the first one I think was exhausting my one-on-one -on -one capacity and then like having to figure out what to do next and what to, how to move my business forward. Cause it was either go agency or go online and the agency thing didn't really fit with me. So I take on a, a handful of one-on-one -on -one clients that I look after everything holistically in terms of their marketing. And then I've got my beautiful membership and I've got some strategic work that I do as well. I think that was the hardest thing for me, but really leaning into what that looked like because no one can mm -hmm. ever tell you what to do because mm. there's a million ways to do something, but you've got to actually figure out what is the best thing for you. And the second hardest, most challenging, most rewarding thing I've ever done is have my children and be running a business at the same time. So mm. I started my business before I had kids. So my business is just over six years old and my children are one and three months and two and a half. So I think like who I was showing up as before I had children in my business I had to re-think um, what my strategy was after that because my, I had changed. And mm. so I had to start from scratch and I had to reinvent myself and I had to, well, how am I going to include like this in my life and how are they going to fit in? And I can tell you now, like I'm one of those people that 
I don't share my kids on my social media through my business because they're not my pawn. And it's like, I have found a lot of business owners saying, yeah, but I don't want to bear my soul on my socials. I want to market my business. And the key to that, and I'm like a testament to this because I've been through it, is having a really good strategy. And when you've got that, you always have that to fall back on. Um, and that is something that I build for clients too. So that's social media strategies and marketing strategies. And when you've got that, you don't have to be your soul because you know how you're showing up, you know what you're doing. Mm. So that they're the two biggest things I've had to kind of move through. Um, yeah. And I feel like I have, I feel like I've got a beautiful balance now and it all comes down to having a really great plan. So Yeah, I, I love that. And I think I'm always inspired by people uh, and, you know, especially women who are running businesses. One of my business besties, um, Ali Nitschke, she's got like four boys that are aged 10 and under and, and she's killing it in business and she yeah, travels a lot. And her husband's, yeah, her husband's very involved in, you know, house life. You know, yes, there's no. They have to be. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and, and I just go like, you know, I had one child who I had shared custody of and that used to challenge me before I was even in business. <laughs> So, <laughs> oh, look, my husband, now he 20. Works from home. <laughs> I mean, yeah. yeah. So, um, but yeah, I think that's amazing. And I think it's, it's really great to have people like yourself that are role modeling how this is possible, right? That mm, you don't have to absolutely. run yourself ragged, that you can no. have boundaries, you can, you know, really make that work for you. So that's, that's really cool. So Hayley, if you were going to say, you know, um, if there was something you really wanted people to know that would help them understand how working with an expert in marketing could really be a big change in business, like make things so much easier for them. Like, like what is one thing you'd want them to know about how that could change, right? In, in getting the help of an expert in their marketing. Oh, what's one thing. I think when you've got confidence, in your marketing messaging, when you've got clarity around your marketing positioning, alignment with your digital footprint, which is kind of what I mentioned earlier, your content's optimized. Then the byproduct of that is obviously increased sales and business growth. Mm. You, and, and, I was going to say, it's just that even when you're saying that I'm going, it just makes everything seem easier. It's yeah. You, when you've, and that's your foundations when you have yeah. that, um, and you, you get help to do that because, you know, it's it's really hard when you try and write your about section yourself, you know, this yeah. is kind of the same. Your trajectory is a lot faster yeah. and a lot like quicker to get to where you want to go instead of you spending three years figuring out what it is. All it takes is for someone to come in that isn't so close to your business from an outsider perspective and go, hey, you should be doing this. Mm, yeah yeah I love it's, that it's lovely I've been in that situation so many times and I'm so so thankful um you know even like my latest launch of my membership um I've this is it's growing beautifully and I welcomed in more members than I ever had and the reason for that is because I worked with somebody to help me redefine my messaging and what that looked like. So as somebody that is in marketing and brand, you know, there's lots of people that do what I do, but what gives me that edge is the work that I had to do. And now I feel like I've got it. Like there's a beautiful smile on my face right now. The light bulb is, you know, on and I'm, I'm, you know, able to share this with the rest of the world and I've got something that just hits home and I Mm. love it. Yeah. I, and it is so much in personality. And I know that's some of the yeah. things that I always pick when I see you. It's like, I remember you did a post and it had like a Led Zeppelin track in the background. <laughs> and I'm just like, I just so love that you've got Led Zeppelin. And now today you've got a Guns N' Roses t-shirt on. And I'm like, I'm not a big Bogan I, and neither are you, but I mean, like I've, I'm a bit rock and roll, right? Yeah. And- you said, yeah, you're a bit rock and roll, Haley. I was like, Thanks. And I also have really curly hair. So it looks like a bit of an afro. <laughs> yeah. But um I but I just love that. And I think that it's just it's just being okay with sharing those parts of you that you know will relate to the people that you want to work with. And um Absolutely. and I think, you know, that's really good. So one final question, Haley. I've loved this conversation. I could just Me talk too. to you so, all day. <laughs> but I, uh, the one question I love to ask people is because, you know, and I know this from personal experiences, when you get into business and you, you really get into business, it can become all consuming. And I know you've said about how you've had to change, how you work with having your children, but what do you do to like switch off from, from business and, and, you know, have fun? What do you, 
What do you do for fun? Oh, what do I do? So this is going to sound a bit crazy, but I love to exercise. Um, that's yeah. my form of meditation. <laughs> yeah. Um, and honestly, like it's, it's, I've been like training and playing competitive sports since I was really young. So it comes very easy to me, but that is the only time that I really get to be alone with my thoughts and myself and not even my thoughts. Cause I'm usually that like smashed by my like F45 that I can't think, yeah. but that's on purpose because yeah. I need that in my life to be able to function as a really good mom and as a beautiful business owner that can, cause I, I help people. Right. So if I yeah. don't have my glass full, how can I help other people? So that's what I do for fun. And I love to pamper myself. So massages, facials, um, all of that sort of stuff I do for fun. But I go to playgrounds. That's my fun these days. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but it's so true. I know what you mean about like this, the exercise. I don't do a lot of hard cardio anymore because I got to a point where my adrenals weren't dealing with it. Yeah. But, um, but I love yoga for the same thing. Yes. Like in yoga, you have to kind of focus on what you're doing and like how you're holding poses and stuff and you can't entertain <laughs> anything else you can't you it. can't it's it's honestly the best it was I just say this really funny story so my friend messaged me and she was like do you know of any new places like we could go for dinner because we had a dinner date and I was like no but I could tell you some really good playgrounds <laughs> that's what I do for fun these days yeah <laughs> so you know like my kids are very small so yeah yeah they need yeah. me my fun is like limited well, but I mean, you're still making time. For I do. All, for I do. Things, and like my husband and I are very, very aware of having that time alone and that, you know, yeah, to fill mm. your cup and you come back a better parent, a better wife or husband and a better, better just soul, I think. Yeah. I love that, Hayley. Thank you so much, Hayley. You know, I feel like I, I, I've loved hearing about, you know, you've shared so much knowledge around marketing. It's been really valuable. And, and I also love you just an awesome human, right? Oh, like you're just so one of those you. people <laughs> that you go, you're a good person all around. So um, thank you so much for coming on the coaching circle. It's been an absolute pleasure and uh, yeah, really appreciate you sharing all your wisdom. Thanks, Tony. Oh!